Okay, in this video, we're going to discuss uh, types of error in null hypothesis significance testing. So assuming we're using a dichotomous decision rule, uh, basically where we would either reject the null hypothesis and claim there is an effect or that there is a statistically significant difference between means or a statistically significant relationship between variables, or we would fail to reject the null hypothesis and say that we don't really have any uh, strong evidence to suggest that there is a relationship or difference between the means, or in other words, claim that there is no effect. Um, it's possible that we can make a correct or an incorrect deci decision. So assuming uh, reality is either the null hypothesis is true, or the null hypothesis is false, right? Now, we really don't know that reality. That's probably why we're collecting data from a sample to try to figure out what is the reality in the population. But let's just for now pretend that in reality, the null hypothesis is either true or false. And our decision can be either to reject the null and basically conclude there is a difference, effect, or relationship, or fail to reject the null and basically not be able to make a conclusion. So if we fail to reject the null and the null hypothesis is true, we're good. We've made a correct decision. If we reject the null and the null hypothesis is false, meaning there is an effect, we're golden. We've made a correct decision. Uh, but there is the possibility that we make an error when we conduct a statistical significance test. One type of error is when we reject a null and basically claim we found something when in fact there was nothing to be found. So in other words, in reality the null hypothesis was true, but in our data we decided to reject a null hypothesis. This type of error is called a type 1 error or also could be called alpha error. You'll remember alpha is the significance criterion or cutoff below which the p-value needs to be in order to reject the null hypothesis. Alpha can also be thought of as the maximum probability you're willing to accept a type 1 error in a statistical uh, hypothesis test. So alpha basically is the a priori uh, probability of making a type 1 error. And remember again, a type 1 error is rejecting the null or saying there's an effect when in fact there is no effect. The other type of error we can make is called a type 2 error or could be called a beta error and basically that occurs when the null hypothesis is false so it should be rejected but we were not able to reject it or our data indicated that we should not reject it and that would be called a type 2 error. Uh, that type 2 errors happen often when a study doesn't have, let's say, enough participants or enough cases to have what's called enough statistical power to detect the effect. Type 1 errors can occur for a variety of reasons. They could occur simply just due to chance or they could occur uh, based on like some funny business that the researchers or statisticians might be playing with their data to cause uh, an effect to emerge, so there's some questionable research practices that can lead to uh, a lot of type 1 errors uh, occurring in a scientific field. It's kind of a problem that crops up every now and then and, and has cropped up recently where, where many findings uh, don't replicate because they are actually type 1 errors. Now type 1 errors could happen innocently by chance and they could also happen due to questionable research practices. Type 2 errors are likely to occur due to insufficient power, what's called statistical power, which we'll get to uh, in, in a future lecture. Uh, but basically, power is your ability to detect something that is there, or the probability that you'll detect an existing effect in an analysis. And a lot of times, if you don't have enough participants in a study or enough uh, cases in an analysis, then you may lack statistical power and you may not be able to detect an effect that is there and that's when you would make a type 2 error. So another way to think of this is a type 1 error uh, again is rejecting the null, concluding there's an effect when there is not an effect. So basically saying something is there when it's not there. 
because rejecting the null is detecting an effect, basically. Uh, the, uh, probably an easy way to think of type 1 error is a false positive. It's making a false positive, whereas a type 2 error is making a false negative. So failing to reject the null when there is an effect. So type 2, you're missing something that's there. Type 1, you're claiming something is there when in fact it is not there. So those are the, the two major types of errors uh, with regard to null hypothesis significance testing. Uh, and these are types of errors that are kind of like a trade-off. We, we seek to minimize type 1 error, but at the same time, uh, some of the things that we might do to minimize type 1 error might actually increase the likelihood of type 2 error and vice versa. So researchers have to think about beforehand uh, things that they can do to reduce type 1 error. So one thing they could do is to set a very low alpha. So if you set a very low alpha, an alpha of, let's say, 0.001 would be quite low in most psychological studies, uh, that, that would give you a lot of protection against a type 1 error. But it would inflate the likelihood of making a type 2 error unless you recruited many participants for your study. So it, it, uh, these two types of errors can be uh, a trade-off in a sense. So uh, I hope uh, you enjoyed that as much as I did.